What's up, everybody? I'm Evil Rabbit. We're here on a set of courses staring at an NRG Innovations wheel inside of a, a 2JZ powered 180SX with my NRG Evil Rabbit seats inside. So, we're going to be taking this thing for a rip against a mountain road. This 2J putting down a lot of power, putting down about that's not the right amount of power. 984 horsepower is what we're throwing down. This thing bangs, pops. Bangs off red line. We're gonna take it to the mountains, and we're going to just let this thing loose here. This is my new one of my new project cars that I'm working on, 2JZ powered, 180SX. Make sure you guys follow me on all social media, all of which are found in the description box below. Harana Drift, 2J powered, 180SX. We're gonna go load our last tune that we used on the car, and well, listen to that thing purr. So, one big thing that is different about this car than some of my other cars I've been using and building is if you notice it does not go into gear when I put the gear in gear that is because it has a dog box or you know straight cut race transmission so I have to put my shifter into sequential mode and it's basically just down is up and up is down going to reverse back to neutral you gotta be stopped in order for it to go to neutral you do not need the clutch to shift gears you only need it to start rolling. So it's a testing and a new transmission that I'm working on to hopefully maybe put in some of my other comp cars and stuff like that. So let's just give this 2J a rip here and see what we can come up with. Got my phone blown off. Gonna turn that off real quick. There we go, I'm drifting, all right? All right, let's go. Oh boy. Banging through gears, no clutch needed. Oh, and banging to walls. Well, that's not very, uh, very good for a first shakedown of the car. But this is kind of the first time that I'm taking this car out after throwing the 900 horsepower 2J in it. So this is the first initial shakedown of the car. And if you guys have been around the channel long enough, you guys know my love-hate relationship for turbo cars when it comes to high power and staying in boost. I have a problem usually staying in boost, so this is kind of my test platform for that. Ugh. It's a test platform car for me to get used to staying in boost in a higher horsepower car. The dog box definitely helps a little bit. And most of like the FD Pro drivers and all that do have dog boxes in their cars. So it's not a stretch to see in a drift car for sure. Now it is nice because in a competition standpoint, you won't miss a gear. If you're in a competition, you will not miss a gear because, well, you just have to go up or down. You can't accidentally miss shift and screw yourself up. And in a real world situation, if you miss shift, you could you know, potentially cause somebody to wreck into you. So, having a really high horsepower car with a dog box is kind of fun. It's different. Not many cars in a set of course I believe have it, especially not drift cars. So, something that I'm uh, toying around with in this 180, and this car is rowdy. It is loud. It is just all red line, all power. And absolutely a blast to drive right now. Thought I need a handbrake. I may have to adjust the steering acumen a little bit. Maybe add a little bit more steering angle. I feel like it has enough steering angle, but I feel like it could use some more. The gears are very short. So if you notice, I was slowing down. It's because the car tops out at about 115. Because it is, like I said, a very short gear ratio for drifting, obviously. So it does top out, I believe, like 115. I could stretch it out and do stuff like that, but for this purpose, kept it where it was at. Oh, a little lock up of the front wheels. Gotta adjust the brake pressure and bias because that locked up the front really quick. And getting used to not using the clutch, because I always use the clutch when I'm normally shifting, so getting used to not having to is definitely, you know, gonna be weird, but 
using the clutch when shifting it isn't hurting anything, but it is, you know, dropping me out of boost. So that's why the sequential the dog box transmission is nice because I can just bang it into gear like that, stay in boost, stay in power, and stay on throttle and not, you know, have to loot, worry about coming off the clutch or off the throttle and hitting the clutch to shift. Well, oh, hitting the clutch to shift, causing me to fall a little bit out of boost. So it's a way for me to start learning how to stay in boost without having to uh, use the clutch so much. I can point my gear where I need it to be and then hopefully learn how to stay in boost when tandeming because you guys know I do have a little bit of a problem with high turbo cars and staying in boost when I'm chasing somebody. So this is going to be my test car, going to be using it with some of the TUS guys. I do have some VDC tires set on this car. so. This is not the VDC tires on it right now. These are basically some street tires that I am just destroying here on this mountain. But I will be putting some VDCs, either some uh, Tri Aces or Achilles uh, 1 2 3s on here, and seeing about running some tandems with some of the TUS guys and stuff like that, and some of my friends to get used to chasing in a, in a, you know, a boosted car without falling out of boost. There we go. The car's pretty stable. I'm actually very impressed with how it's handling right now for essentially the first shakedown of this car. Oh, nope. I think we're good, though. I think we fixed it. Why my mouse is in the middle, but we're gonna get rid of it. Quick flip back. So, if you guys like this car and you guys want to see more of my trials and tribulations of boosted cars, or you have some advice for me for staying in boosted boosted cars, I know it's all about how you come off throttle, how quickly you come off throttle, and stuff like that, and it's just something I need to really work on. So I figured I'd build a very high-powered car and work on it. I think we're going to hit... Oh, we hit the end of the track. We spawn back to pits. Go the other way. And rip this car a little bit more. But we can't go the other way. I forgot. That's all it is to it. So let's go test this on a basically VDC track and see how that works my mouse back onto my screen and we're gonna go to OSW my favorite testing track and we're gonna go test at OSW and see what this does on some grippier tires in a I guess test environment for competition for tandems because I'm very curious on how this car is going to do and if I can stay in boost up you know on the turns then we're gonna be good. We're gonna try it with the tri aces. We're gonna drop the tri aces down. So, like I said, we do have tri aces on here. We do have Achilles one, two, three. So we're gonna try the tri aces first. We're gonna get rid of my mouse because I keep forgetting to get rid of the mouse. So, like I said, the dog box is definitely very fun. It's very different, but it's very cool at the same time. Um, so. If you guys are interested in seeing how to model and how to change engines and stuff like that, let me know down in the comments because I'm thinking about doing basically some modeling tutorials, basics, changing wheels, changing seats, interior, and stuff like that. Basic modeling principles, some paint, you know, painting and stuff like that. So if you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comments. So for a first throw not bad not touch the handbrake on that car actually wow so first throw at that it was actually a very decent run I'm gonna want to take a look at that run real quick because that was a uh, pretty respectable run wasn't super high on the bank but it was still 
very respectable. I also just want to see what the car looks like on the outside with that open hood. And that's UJ. Apparently, I think I need to adjust the suspension a little bit. That was a very solid run. If you notice, there's also no windows in the car. I did remove the uh, driver and passenger side windows just because, well, most most of the time when you're drifting, you have to have your windows down anyways. So kind of trying to make it more of a realistic looking car. So we're going to give one more run here for today. And make sure you guys follow me on all social media. Like I said, if you guys want to see a little bit into the modeling and how I built these cars and stuff like that, let me know down in the comments. hit lock.